even if, you know, I had not decided to shave my head, I think that having the perspective as a black woman and understanding that my curly hair does not make me any better or any more beautiful than any other black woman. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Taylor Ray, and I am back with another video. I feel like I have been going through this thing where I'll record a video and then I just hate like the video, the entire, like I hate the whole video. Anyone, anyone else go through that? But trying to figure out where my content is going and also figure out who I want to be and how I want to show up on here because I feel like I show up in so many different types of spaces. It's kind of been interesting putting it all together. But yeah, I'm excited to dive into today's topic, so I'm just going to get right into it. Today's topic is I want to talk about what I've learned from shaving my head. It has been about a year since I have decided to shave my head, and I know that most people that are close to me in my life or most people that come across me know why I shave my head, but in case you are new to getting to know me and you don't know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So on May 24th, 2022, my sister was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Cancer is always a big shock to anybody, you know, or any family. It's always something that, you know, just turns everything upside down. But I feel like with the place that my family was at and going even forward after my sister was diagnosed with cancer, it was just very odd timing with everything that was going on. It was just, it was just such a crazy time. And it was something quite personally that I feel like my family and I just did not expect. I've always had a very complicated relationship with my sister, but as I've gotten older, I feel like we are not only becoming closer, but I feel like, you know, we're also finding our way through life together, you know, as sisters are, you know, if you got a, you know, you got a sister, you know. But anyway, she was diagnosed with cancer last year and immediately when she was diagnosed, I knew I wanted to shave my head. It was an instant but I just didn't know when I was gonna do it and I also was scared and I also just didn't know how I was going to go about it or if I really was going to do it I text my brother and I was like I want to shave my head and and my brother's the oldest so I you know he is somebody that also I'm really close to and someone that has really been a great prominent figure in my life. And he was like, of course I'll shave your head. You know what I mean? Of course, of course, sister, right? Of course I will. So, you know, fast forward as we get to everything, I want to speed this up a little bit, but fast forward, we I get there and <laughs> I tell everybody at the dinner table that I want to shave my head. And everybody is telling me no 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 don't do it you know my sister's telling me not to do it my mom especially is telling me not to do it it was a hard it was a hard no although you know they were telling me no at first i was a little discouraged because i thought that they would be more supportive but my brother and i looked at each other and i, I was like you know what fuck it and i had my hair in braids in two in two braids and i took the scissors and I just cut one of them off. Like. These are thick. Auntie, you know what? <laughs> Auntie, you know what you can do? Auntie, you know what? And of course, right? It's like they're well, I can't I can't go back now. I can't go back with just one braid off and one braid, you know, you know, just on my head and I'm gonna look stupid. So we went through the process. My brother shaved my head. It was a very beautiful experience. And in that too, my niece actually shaved uh one half of her head. So she shaved the side of her head. Uh yeah, and it was just such a beautiful moment. We cried, we laughed. I never thought in my life that I would ever do something like that. So it's been about a year and as you can see, I am still bald. I am still, still don't have no hair. I shave my head every month and I've kept it up that way and I absolutely love it. <laughs> and I never thought I would love it so much. The only thing that 
I miss so much is hairstyles. I, if you know me, you know that like I went through a little something for a little while where I was doing like space buns and braids and like, you know, big, my big curly hair days and like, you know, the wash and goes and, and the techniques. I was a very big natural hair watcher, you know, religiously because seeing women on YouTube with my curly hair or my texture of hair, uh, I had no idea how to style it. So it was really awesome watching women that had my had my texture of hair. So yeah, I do miss all of those things because there is a, a really big self-care component to that, but I don't miss the weight and the maintenance and everything that came with my hair and a lot of the pressure that came with my hair. And with that, I wanna tell y'all a little bit about just some of the things that I've learned in the last year since shaving my head. I feel like I have learned a ton. I feel like I have learned so much. And even when I first shaved my head, I felt like I was just a completely different person. Just looking in the mirror and I'd be like, who, like, who is this person? Because it's a really, really drastic change. And I, want to bring this up that being a black identifying person that you know and having hair be such a big part of my life and having my hair be a big part of my identity like that's how people identified me you know that was one of the ways that people would recognize me they'd be like oh yeah that girl with like the really big curly hair um and that in itself is something that I always held on to. It's something that has been with me for so long and it's something that I've struggled with for so long, but also something that I have loved, grown to love about myself. You know, it just, it took so much time. So having that all off of my head, yeah, there was a lot of things that I needed to learn. So one of the biggest things that I've learned is that there is so many more levels to beauty. I just always thought that hair was the main thing that made me feminine. Hair was the main thing that made me stick out, stand out. And truly, it, it, will, it really was one of my biggest things like again like people thought that like oh my gosh like taylor's got taylor just got that 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 curly hair she's got that big curly hair but when i shaved my head i didn't have that anymore so i had to really think about my beauty from a different perspective and really think about the other things that make me who I am. Because when you're bald and when you're insecure, you can feel like not only you get lost in the crowd, right? But that you could see how much hair is favored. And when you don't have it, it can just, again, you kind of just drown out in the background. Like, at least it can feel that way. That's how it felt for me in the beginning. And when I made the decision to just own the fact that I'm bald, even though I made the choice to be bald, but how I made that choice for my, you know, to support and be in solidarity with my sister, it was still a moment for me to really just own that that this is what it is like and really when I don't also have any makeup on like this is as natural that's as natural as it could get. And not be ashamed of anything on me and not be ashamed of anything that is that that I didn't think was beautiful about me. It being bald has really taught me how to just own who I am and own every single part of myself and discover new beautiful parts of myself. Beautiful parts of me that were hidden behind my hair. So that's another one. And I'll just jump into that. That I, for the longest time, was hiding behind my hair because my hair was my identity. My hair was the one thing that I felt safe behind. And I really was fueled by that validation. I can't even lie to you. And especially being somebody that is a recovering people pleaser, being someone who has been incredibly insecure, it was weird for me to not have those compliments anymore. I'm, and again, I'm being really real about this because I, I know that we like to kind of not talk about that. And I know that we don't like to acknowledge certain type of texture of hair is, is complimented way more than, than another. We all know what it is. And when 
again, when I didn't have that anymore, oh my gosh, <laughs> when I didn't have that anymore, it opened up a different perspective for me on, wow, I need to have a, a different outlook on really what makes me me. And I knew that I was hiding behind my hair when I began to have that perspective. But anyways, I just, I was hiding behind my hair so much to the point where it was really holding me back from exploring and accepting different parts of my personality and other things that made me who I am. Shaving my head really forced me to sit down <laughs> and be, and not be so critical of myself and understand that if I ever you know lost my hair in any regard like it's just like because that's what it is it's like if I lost my hair it's like this is this is what it is this is what it is so you have the choice to either hate it or love it and I find that that both of those journeys or both of those processes are so hard Loving yourself for who you authentically are is always so hard. But the reward behind it or at the end of it is so worth, you know, the the process and the pain and the tears and the healing as opposed to hating everything about yourself because there's not really anything positive that's at the end of that for you. Now I'm able to just fully stand in who I am and know that I don't need hair in order to feel good about myself. Because even though for me being bald was some was a choice, it's still something that I was incredibly scared of. But over what? Like scared of what? Like what what people think or not fitting into society's beauty standards or not living up to these standards that other people have made for me? Because that's literally what it was. And not to mention, you know, when I first shaved my head, there were a lot of people that were like, oh my goodness, you look so beautiful. You know, you look so great. It suits you so well. And I am flattered by comments like that. But then I also got a lot of comments in the beginning where they were like, are you, like, are you serious? Nah, nah. Were also a couple of comments that I didn't really tell anybody, but how, some people would come up to me and say, I can't believe that you are a black woman and cut off all that hair. How could you do that? There are so many people out here in the world, there are black girls out here in the world that, that would kill for your type of hair and you're just gonna go cut it off like that? I had people that really made comments to me like that and just, were almost upset and sad and frustrated and angry about something that I decided to do with my hair. But saying that because I did it, it was it was a way of me being ungrateful. Do, do you see where there is a problem with that? Even if, you know, I had not decided to shave my head. I think that having the perspective as a black woman and understanding that my curly hair does not make me any better or any more beautiful than any other black woman. And this focus on hair and this obsession with hair that I do understand comes from history and that I'm not taking away from anybody, but how this mindset around this curly hair or this like good hair or this like you should be grateful that you have this hair why would you ever cut off this hair like that 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 perspective is something that is also killing our communities and I personally did not understand that until I cut it all off because because it is a privilege that I have benefited from so that was definitely something that I needed to learn for sure another thing that I learned is that I know I kind of touched on this a little bit already, but just how so much beauty comes from your personality. 
You know, you hear that all the time where people are like, oh, you know, it's, it's on the inside that counts, it's personality that counts. Looks do matter to a certain extent, but looks get you in the room, but personality keeps you in the room. We are in an age or in an era or just in really living in a world that is fueled by superficial things and superficial, you know, beauty and looks and outer exterior and just and I say this as a lesson because I have benefited from, you know, these superficial beauty standards, especially for black women. And my hair, as I mentioned before, was one of them. My perspective on looks and appearance and superficial things have always that's something for me that has always been there. And it's something that I didn't realize was a problem until I shaved my head. Because at the end of the day, when your looks are gone, when your hair is gone, when the makeup is gone, when your expensive jewelry is gone, what do you really have? Can you say that you are a good person? Can you say that you treat people with integrity? Can you say that you have compassion for others? Can you say that you're a hard worker and you're really passionate about what you do? Can you say that you do what you love? Can you say that you don't care about what other people think about you? Can you say that you really, really love who you are as a person? Can you say that you've really loved, you know, the moves that you've made to get to this point? Can you say you have no regrets? saying those are certain things to think about and there are a lot of things that I needed to think about in the beginning and that at the end of everything none of this the superficial stuff really matters it matters to get you in the room but again as I said before it your personality and who you are and how you authentically show up has you stay in the room and those are the things that catapult you to where you want to go. And my last and final lesson that I've learned since shaving my head is just how much I love myself and how grateful I am to have gone through this very <laughs> impromptu journey with, with shaving my head and really finding out who I am. I have cried. I have... You know, had so many times where I'm just like, why did I do this? And then even when I remember the reason that I've that I shaved my head is something that cannot ever be taken away from me. To me, and I'm gonna, you know, toot my own horn for a second, it's something that can't be taken away from me because it really showed in that moment just how much of a selfless compassionate person that I am. And I know that a lot of people don't like to hear people talk about themselves like that in that light on, you know, online, because you know, when then people say, Oh, well, if you're a compassionate person, you don't got to say it. If you're a nice person, you don't got to say it. If you're this, you don't got to say it. But I'm saying it now, because when ever, whenever I tell anybody why I shave my head, people automatically look at me differently. And they look at me differently because they know that they would never do it, you know? And, and it doesn't say anything better about me or it doesn't say that I'm better than anyone, but in a way it really did show who I am and how much, you know, love and compassion and generosity and everything that I have within me because I love my sister so much. There was nothing that really could have stopped me from doing that because when my sister told me, don't do it, you're going to regret it or you're, you know, you don't know how you're going to look or you don't know how, you know what I mean? You don't know. But I told her in the moment, I said, it don't matter because I love you. I'm gonna get emotional like no I'm not crying on YouTube I'm not doing that it's too early in the game I'm not crying on YouTube yet Whew. but I told her like it was something that was for you and when you do something for somebody else it doesn't matter what the you know what what the consequences are or what's gonna happen because you know it's for somebody else 
I didn't expect anything in return. And little did I know that shaving my head was exactly what I needed to get me to my next level. Shaving my head has not hindered me from anything. Shaving my head has not stopped anybody from being like, so what's your name? What's your number? Can I, can I talk to you for a minute? For the most part, when you stand in who you are and how confident you are and how much you love yourself, people take notice of that no matter what you look like. But being bald, especially as a woman, is definitely a statement. So if you're thinking about it, shave your head. This is not a PSA video to shave your head, but, uh, but do it, especially if you've been thinking about it for a while. Because truly, you're never going to know what you look like until you shave it. You are never, ever, ever going to know. No bald filter can tell you what you're going to look like. No filter on Snapchat, snap, uh, no <laughs> filter on Snapchat can tell you what you're going to look like. Nothing, nothing can ever tell you what you're going to look like. You can't like take your hair, you know, and like lift it up. What if I just like, what if, what would I look like? Like, no, you got to shave it all off. You just got to do it. Those are some of the life lessons that I have learned. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you picked up a thing or two. Thank you for watching and thank you for taking the time to listen to a part of my story. It really means a lot to me and the support means so much to me. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video and to the channel. You know, also comment as well. I'd love to see your comments. You can follow me on my socials. They're in my bio. And yeah, take care of yourself. I love you and I'll see you next time. Mwah.